We started this series on the book of Job called A Man in the Land of Us. And this one is going to be titled The Four Messengers of Job's Apocalypse. Previously, we found out that Job is a just man. He's perfect, he's upright, he's one that fears God and eschews evil. We see Job is living a blessed and righteous life on earth. But meanwhile, in heaven, we saw there was a conversation going on. You see, Satan has been given permission to let all hell break loose on Job. And I mean all hell broke loose. The devil is going to allow there to be survivors to come and relay messages to Job about the horrible things that the devil's doing to him. It's almost like they are the four messengers of Job's apocalypse. It's like someone in high places was opening up the seals on Job like the Lord does in Revelation 6 during the tribulation. If anyone had a right to say their world was coming to an end, then it would be Job. Uh, so I thought it was fitting to call this the four messengers of Job's apocalypse. But the messenger number one, what message does he bring? The Sabians steal Job's animals and slay his servants. That's the first message that comes to Job. In Job one thirteen. it says, And there was a day. When his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Notice that phrase, there was a day. Remember that. There was a day when everything was going good for Job. There was a day. Remember during the good old days that those days aren't going to last forever. When you're going through your good old days, those days aren't going to last forever. So soak it up and use those days wisely. Because there's going to be a day when that may come to an end. Ephesians 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. How are you using these days? Right now I'm in some good old days. But it could all change by tonight. I need to redeem the time. If I stay right with God in the good days, then how much more in the bad days? And there was a day. When his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. So they were eating and drinking. And the book of Job, like I said, shows a, a picture of the time of Jacob's trouble. It shows a picture of the great tribulation. Do you know what they're going to be doing during that time? Well, in Matthew 24, 38 through 39, it says, For as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So in the tribulation, right before the, the Lord comes back, they're just going to be eating and drinking. That's exactly what uh, Job's kids were doing. Job one thirteen and 14. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. You see, all things were continuing as usual. And when all things are just going as usual, it makes people get complacent. It makes them start taking stuff for granted. It makes them think that things are never going to change. The oxen were plowing and the asses were feeding his... Uh, uh, children were eating and drinking at their eldest brother's house. And Job's life was running just like a fine-tuned machine. And this makes a lot of people begin to think that this life is all there is and everything's just going to continue as it always will. And a lot of people, they begin to scoff. In Second Peter 3, 4, it says, "In saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fall, fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You see, people start to um, say, well, my papa always said God was coming back. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. But where is he? Where's the promise of his coming? All things are continuing just like they were when he was a kid. And see, in Job's life, the oxen were plowing, the asses were feeding, his children were eating and drinking, and his children were probably 
complacent. Thought, didn't think anything was ever bad going to happen. But you see, Job was not like that. Job knew that things were about God. He had his affection set on things above. He knew that there was more than just this life. And Job knew that things were going good, but he still put God first anyway. He got up every day, and it was the same thing going on every day, but he knew that judgment day was coming. Job 1, 13 through 15. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. They took his oxen. They took his asses. They killed a bunch of his servants with the edge of the sword. And when that pale horse shows up in Revelation 6, he also kills with the sword. So the messenger number one, he matches the pale horse that shows up in Revelation 6. Job is the only one who could really say his world's coming to an end. The devil would have loved to just go ahead and kill Job. But this, the messenger number one, he's the only one that escaped to tell Job. The devil would have loved to kill that messenger, but he couldn't wait for Job to come and discover the scene and see the look on his face. He was just in a hurry for Job to find out, so he left that messenger alive so that he could go and tell Job. He allowed this one man, just this one man, to escape and come to tell Job. And, and you know what that's like? It's like you, you see a lot of these criminals that commit crimes. They love to what you'd call leave a mark. Or a serial killer, you see, will sometimes kill. And then he'll go down the road, find a payphone, and then call the cops on his own crime. That's what this makes me think of. The killer, BTK, he killed some lady, went up the road, and then called the cops on himself. And it just it just goes to show you that they want credit for it. They want to see the the uh, how it's going to play out. They want to see what's going to happen because of what they just did. And that's what the devil did. He left one messenger that would go tell Job what he just did but see just like that killer btk he went and he kept messing around with the cops back and forth and then 30 years later he got himself caught because he kept playing cat and mouse games with the police years after he committed his last murder something like 30 years after he committed the last murder he kept playing these these cat and mouse games with the cops and until they finally caught him you see uh, people like this are full of the devil, they they love to get credit for what they've done. But that was messenger number one. Messenger number two brings a message that the fire of God from heaven has burned up Job's sheep and his servants. In Job one sixteen it says, While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. First off, notice it says, while he was yet speaking. While who was yet speaking? Well, messenger number one. While messenger number one was still speaking. Before he even was finished telling Job the severity of the first blow from the devil, here comes messenger number two. It's like in the tribulation time period. You're going to have a lot of these ca catastrophic events happening at the same time. Although you may, when you're reading Revelation, you think, well, this is happening chronologically. No, a lot of these things are happening at the same time. Just like for Job, the saying was never so true that when it rains, it pours. You see, sometimes in my life, it seems like when one bad thing happens, about 10 other bad things happen with it. In Job 1.16, it says, While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is 
fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. You see, this isn't the only time God rained some fire from heaven. He did it in Lot's day. In Genesis 19:24, it says, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. God rained down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah because of their wickedness. Now, he's raining it down on Job's family to, a, to prove a point. He wants to show the devil that Job loves God and that he's going to He's, he's not going to curse the Lord like the devil is falsely prophesying. You see, Job is having hell on earth as a type of Israel in the tribulation. Job is a picture of Israel in the tribulation. He's going through hell on earth. They will also see fire fall from the sky. In Revelation 8, 7, the first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. You see how so much stuff that in Job's story, how so much of it, it reminds you of things that take place in the tribulation, because he's a picture of Israel in the tribulation. Sometimes the devil will get in people, and they become a messenger of Satan. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So Job has sent some messengers so that he doesn't get exalted above measure. You see, he was righteous. He was wise. He was rich. And I guess you can call this preventive maintenance. He was going to get hit where it hurt before he could get the big head. So he sent some messengers. Now, messenger number three, what's his message? His message is that the Chaldeans carried away the camels and killed his servants. In Job 1.17, it says, While he was yet speaking, there came also another. Another what? Another messenger. And said, The Chaldeans made out three bands. And fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Notice again, while he was yet speaking. Before messenger number two could get done, here comes messenger number three. Because when it rains, it pours. The Chaldeans took his camels away. Then they killed more of his servants with the sword. And also take this into account the chaldeans are from babylon and you know who some of the people are that gives god people trouble in the tribulation well that would be babylon read revelation 17 through 18 and read about mystery babylon the great she's a killer in revelation 18 24 it says and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth what did the chaldeans do they came through and they fell upon the camels and have carried them away yea and slain the servants with the edge of the sword notice the similarity there but once again only one guy got out alive and i think that this was done because the devil was ready for job to hear about the disaster that he had just done. He just couldn't, the devil just could not wait to see the look on Job's face when he found out. But now, messenger number four. What's, what's his message? Well, this is the worst one. His message is that Job's children were killed by a great wind. Now we have come to the devil's attempt at a knockout punch. In Job 1, 18 and 19, it says, While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. All the other stuff didn't even matter once Job heard this. He has lost everything. He has lost his children. And there can be no greater pain in this life. A great wind from the wilderness smote the four corners of the house. What does that remind you of in the book of Revelation? Revelation 7, 1, After these things I saw 
four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that, sh that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, or nor on any tree. So you see, that's just, it can't be a coincidence that Job, obviously a picture of Israel going through the tribulation. But this is the worst messenger by far. Imagine, you just had three guys come up to you, one right after the other, telling you, your animals are dead, your, your, all your possessions are ruined, and then now messenger number four, your children have been killed. How does Job talk to God after it happens? That's what we're going to look at now. In Job 1.20, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshipped. He rent his mantle, meaning he tore it, and it pictures him tearing the flesh. And this is where you get the saying, you know, he's all tore up. That's where you get that common saying. But he shaves his head, he falls down to the ground, and this shows mourning. He's mourning over mostly probably his children that have just been killed. He shaves his head to illustrate the fact that he came into this world naked, and he's going to leave it that way. But notice the key word in verse 20. He worshipped exactly what the devil did not want him to do. Job proves to be a champion of the faith. The only man that knocked out the devil better than Job was Jesus Christ himself. When Job fell to the ground and worshipped, that was a blow to the devil. In Job 1, 20 and 21, it says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is true wisdom before the wisest man who ever even lived showed up. This was true wisdom before Solomon ever showed up. If you lose anything or anyone, then realize that the Lord is the one that gave them, and the Lord can take them away, and then bless God anyway. In Job 1.22, it says, In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Job didn't cuss God and die like the devil wanted him to. Job doesn't cuss and blaspheme God like the men in the tribulation will. You see, Job is a picture of a faithful saint, the opposite of the wicked in the tribulation. Because, you see, look at some of the men in the tribulation. When they go through some things, when they go through the horrible things, that take place, that God puts on men in the tribulation. Look at what they do. In Revelation 16, 9, it says, And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Revelation 16, 11, And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their swords, and repented not of their deeds. Revelation 16, 21, and there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Job had all these things happen to him all at once, lost all of his children, but he does not sin with his lips, he does not charge God foolishly, he does not blaspheme God, he proves to be a champion of the faith, he proves to be a real man in the land of us.